Hello again, everyone. Zach Attack is here by Attack Sports for this Monday, October the 10th, 2016. All right, let's kick these off with some football. I did not make it Attack Sports at all last week, so I'm just going to do week five. I'm not going to do anything about week four, I'm just doing week five. We kicked off week five this past Thursday with the Arizona Cardinals destroying San Francisco 49ers. Despite a rough start, they got a big win there in Frisco, 33 to 21, with the continued deterioration of the 49ers. Are they ever gonna fire Kaepernick? Well, he's probably taking too much money to free him, because despite he wanted a trade, he may not get one until probably later. So then on to the Sunday games. Well, I'm happy to say that I get to say Lions did not lose. They almost. <laughs> Jumped again, following another big lead over the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles came rolling back at the end of the second, started the rally at the end of the second quarter, then rallied up the score lot in the third period, and the Boo Birds were out at Ford Field. And I bet you everyone was throwing a towel and saying another tie, Lions lead, choked again. They couldn't beat the Bears last week. Same old Lions are going to come out. But they got a last second field goal to save their lead following losing it. It was 23 21, a minute, minute or two left. Prater scored the field goal and then a big interception thrown by Carson Wentz that sealed the win for the Lions. Got lucky again. Then, around the first half, defense needs to pick it up again. And I think Stafford threw an interception. Or fumbled it, so I gotta keep track of that. So, at least they won another game, proving their one game over the Colts was not a fluke. But now they need to step it up more. At least they came out the gate for once. They came out the gate for once and then choked the lead again. I've been saying that they've been blowing the first half, then coming back in the second, then failing. How do we come out from the gate, from the get go, without choking in the second half? See what happens next week. Taking on the St. Louis Rams. Usually I'd say an easy win. But as they uh, choked against the 0 3 Bears last week, nothing is easy. You know, they beat teams they're supposed to lose against and lose against teams they should beat. That's the Lions for you. Inconsistent, false expectations. Not SOL today. Or should I say yesterday? Meanwhile, the other teams at NFC North one sucked again. Bears lost in a close one against the Colts with Cutler maybe going bye-bye. With the backup doing well, Hoyer, but I think Cutler's got to go. Vikings stay undefeated 5-0. 12 seed the Houston Texans without J.J. Watt, they're lost. But Minnesota won without Adrian Peterson and, of course, still without Kenny Bridgewater. While the Packers win supreme, they won their game last night, 23-16 over the Giants. Despite a rough game for Watson's defense, won them out. Especially returning Clay Matthews after missing Week 3's game. He was healthy enough for Week 5's game against the Giants. While the Vikings are undefeated still, an uh, undefeated streak ended. For the Broncos, without Osweiler, the Falcons, who are going on momentum after defeating the reigning NFC champions, Carolina Panthers last week, they defeated the NFC champion and Super Bowl champion Broncos. It's interesting that the Falcons beat both teams that were in last year's Super Bowl two weeks in a row. Great for the Falcons. After a promising season last season that ended in disaster, maybe they can do something better this season. Not fair on the players like they have done, despite promising seasons. Other big wins, uh, Steelers coming up their, their smattering on the Saturday game against the Kansas City Chiefs, continue trouncing teams like the New York Jets, reading of 31 to 13. The same score as the Houston Minnesota game. Tennessee Titans continue their fluke season of the beating the Lions as they beat 
the Dolphins with a fumble line. Sue, 30 to 17. And the Pants, welcome back, Tom Brady with open arms. 33 to 13. Big win for Tom Brady as the Browns are going down. In Washington, despite the turmoil, they won their game 60 to 10 over the Ravens. Tonight, we got the Carolina Panthers going without Cam Newton after getting many hits in the past couple of games, especially hit big time. In last week's game against the Falcons, he's on concussion protocol. They got a backup. When a 1 and 3 Panthers become 1 and 4, will more fans jump off the bandwagon? It's looking more and more like it. They take on the Bucks tonight. On Monday Night Football. Meanwhile, besides football happening, we had uh, UFC. UFC pay per view happened this past Saturday night. UFC 204 in Manchester, England. I did not get to see that pay per view because I went to a local wrestling show, the XICW show at Matt Billy Gunn. <laughs> Badass Billy Gunn was at the wrestling show. He was cool, man. Been a big DX fan, the DX. So I saw him in Colino Wrestle, the XICW show. They're going to Cobo next year. That's awesome. So proud of this local company. I've been starting to see them for the last couple of months. Proud of them. Going to the Cobo. You know, Cobo Hall. Usually one of the banquet halls. So I was able to see UFC. But it was a very interesting and controversial night for UFC. In Manchester, England. Uh, we had featherweight division. Masad Bektik. Oh my god. They went. Defeated Russell Dole in a submission in the very first round. With four minutes left. In four minutes. Then the big boy. The heavyweight division. Stefan Stroop. Defeated Daniel. Omelixzikuk. Uh, won by submission in the second round. Light heavyweight. We, we had Jimmy Manua. Taking on. OSP, Oban St. Pro, at least I got that name right. Jimmy won by knockout, defeating Oban in the second round. Uh, oh, man, anyway, middleweight, we had Jagard Mus Musasi, taking you know, on Vito Belfort, defeating him by TKO in the second round. And Vito looked worse for wear. As much as Bisbee did in our main event, as he defended his middleweight championship against Dan Hendo Henderson. Uh, we match from UFC 200, uh, 100. When Bisbee got knocked out by Hendo. I remember I was at Buffalo Wild Wings that night. And there was a Brit guy that was cheering on Bisbee. And then Bisbee lost. And everybody was cheering USA. But this time, Bisbee did not get knocked out. But almost did many times. He got taken down a couple times by Hendo. But his buddy Hendo looking like he had the victory. He was going to be Bisbee again. And blame him a big time. Bisbee won. My name is Decision. What some people call it bullshit because it was a, they were in England, the home country of Michael Bisbee. Some people thought maybe split decision, but unanimous? Like it or not, it was what it was, and it was also forwarded the fight of the night bonus. So there you go. Now, before we get to my wall preview for the night, uh, man, can this woman catch a break or what? Uh, Paige, who's gone through her two worlds. Gosh, she could, she could be, like, one of the biggest female good wrestlers right now because she's got the, the attitude and the wrestling ability. She could have great views of Sasha and Charlotte and Bailey and all these great women, especially on Raw. It could really amp up the women's division. But she's had her problems the last couple months. Uh, guilty by, guilty by association. That's what happens when you date a bit of the wheel. <laughs> uh, Paige has been serving a suspension for 30 days recently, and she, the suspension just ended, so we thought, okay, we'd see her back. But the problems continued. Uh, not only is, there, is she apparently hurt with neck issues, but she's suspended again for 60 days. Second strike. Three strikes, you're out. She posted on Facebook, on Twitter, same shit, different day. Kids, do not get subscriptions or doctor's notes. Not acceptable. Rules apply depending on your status. So, little shots. Fire to the WWE. I think Paige could be done here. She's got so much damage done with this situation. If she ever does come back, it might be too little too late to repair any damage done. You know, she had potential to be one of the most fearsome women's wrestlers around, but this backstage drama... 
And Danny Del Rio did not help any matters. So, uh, there you go. We'll see what happens with Pages. Fusion FC suspended again for now 60 days. Her career could be g g gone and done, is all I gotta say. Now we get on down to our wall PV for the night. We got Hell in a Cell coming up on the 31st. Well, the day before the 31st, October 30th. As Wall tries to rebound from an UK Night of Champions. But after SmackDown's baby last night was, yeah, some good action, but some questionable booking, like, why wasn't Ziggler made the main event? Why was Randy on Bray Wyatt? A shitty match the main event. Hopefully Wall gets it right with Hell in a Cell. And they have so much potential for that pay-per-view. And let's get to our top four questions that must be answered tonight. Question number four. Will Braun Strowman finally get competition? Well, finally, he asked for competition. And to destroy another jobber, he grabbed the microphone and said, Foley, give me competition or I leave. And guess what? Oh, that happened. We need competition now for Strowman. You know, they gave uh, Nia Jax some competition with Lisa Fox recently. So now it's Braun's turn to finally go up from jobbers to decent jobbers. Name jobbers. But at least better competitions than these no namers. So we'll see if they fully heed the warning of Strowman tonight. Question number three. What will go down between Rollins and Kevin Owens? Well, it's official as of last night as an ad aired during the uh, No Mercy pay-per-view. For Wall's pay-per-view, that Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins will take place at the pay-per-view. No word on whether or not it's in the cell yet. Hopefully we'll find out what the second Hell in a Cell match is going to be very soon. We do know one. I think Rollins may not be clear for a while. Uh, he did suffer injury at the pay-per-view Clash of Champions in the match against Owens. So he, like, he'll probably appear. And he has been appearing on the show, especially with Green Chris Jericho last week. Well, sending a message to Kevin Owens after distracting him and Jericho from a match against the New Day. Costing him an opportunity in the tag team titles. Well, it wasn't a title match, but it was a match that might have given him a shot if they would have beaten the New Day in an untitled match. But Wallace came out to distract. So, and Wallace says he'll raise hell until he gets his rematch. Well, he is going to get it. A hell to sell. Will he and Wallace, Wallace and Owens get physical? Will they get physical tonight? We shall see. In Spain of Hell in a Cell, let's get to question number two. Will we get any new matches announced for Hell in a Cell? And more specifically, as I mentioned, will we get our next match to be in Hell in a Cell? Now, as announced last week, Rusev and Roman Reigns, stemming from the double count out two weeks ago, will be inside Hell in a Cell at the pay per view. The second Hell in a Cell match is to be determined. Now, could they do three in one night? That's overkill. So, two. So if they decide to have a second Hell in a Cell match, which is typical, have two of the same match in the stipulation pay-per-view, will there be a women's Hell in a Cell match? I said at the end of my wall review last week, especially after that amazing event between Saul and Shola and Sasha last week, that they would have the balls to put these two women inside the cell. Well, they're thinking about it. It makes sense for Wallace and Owens to be in the cell. It does make logical sense, but Charlotte and Sasha would be amazing in it. So we'll see what match they do decide to go with being the second of the cell matches at the pay-per-view. And question number one, what will go down with the returning Paul Heyman making his first appearance on WWE programming since SummerSlam? I make fun of his agent, his clients, all I want. His stick is getting old. It's fucking beat down matches. He injured people. Heck, I still blame him for the reason that Randy Orton did not wrestle Bray Wyatt. But after seeing the match that we did get from them last night, maybe Randy Orton should be injured a little bit more. I wish no harm, but that match was fucking hard last night. Especially as the main events. <laughs> so, anyway, when Brock Lesnar is on the cover of 2K17, which comes out tomorrow, it makes sense for Paul Heyman to show up. Maybe he's going to announce the rumors that we've been hearing lately. Uh, Brock Lesnar Goldberg at Survivor Series. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors about Goldberg coming back. 
And now the Wobblings are there. Even Goldberg was on Sports Center. Everyone thought I was going to make some announcement, but he said nothing about it. So what will Heyman have to say? Will it be about the Goldberg rumors? Will it just be a cheap plug for the 2K17? And that's it. What, what? So we'll see what happens with that as we head down that road. And how to sell tonight. On one, 8, 7 Central, a USA Network. Hope they don't get, they don't get slaughtered in the rating like they did well last week. Especially at no debate to compete with. At least last night was a debate. So Wall should do well tonight in the ratings and should put on a decent show after last night's good one from LA. See if they keep momentum, especially if they're trying to follow SmackDown's pay per view, which is now which is now an easy task because the pay per view is just okay. One good match, like two really good matches, bad placement. That's all I gotta say. And that is it for my attack sports for today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to this channel tonight for my wall review. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the sports news from Zach. See you later. Oh yeah.